Okay, before you watch this video, two things that everybody needs to know. First of all, all of these are recorded and edited at least a day or two in advance, some of them even more. And any changes that occur between recording and uploading, those I will discuss in the first episode of WNBA Weekly. If someone gets hurt during preseason, odds are I'm going to miss it by like an hour or so. And then I will talk about that on May 13th when I upload the first episode of the season. Second of all, I am not in any way associated with the WNBA or any of their sponsors or affiliates. I am not part of the Associated Press. I'm just a guy who loves basketball and wants to talk about the game that I love. So, yeah, all of these are just my own personal opinions based on the observations that I've made. I do take into account some of the things that the media and players and other people will say, but at the end of the day, these are my opinions. So if I happen to say something negative about one of your favorite teams, deal with it. Greetings and welcome to the Fan Perspective. I'm your host Nathan Nile and these are the 2017 WNBA preseason power rankings where based on the moves that the teams made during the offseason, I try to determine how many wins they will get during the 2017 regular season. And the team that I have chosen at number 9 is... Now when I wrote the original draft of this a few months ago, I actually had them in the playoffs, and the thing that knocked them out was finding out that Chinea Gumake had another surgery and is going to miss this all of this season. They also lost Camille Little and Jillian Allen. They traded them away to bring in Lynette Kaiser. They also traded to bring in Rashawn Gray. Allison Hightower is finally healthy enough that she's expected to play this season. They brought in a lot of free agents, including like Jennifer Hampson, Daniel Adams. They had a, a big draft where they picked up people like Brianna Jones, uh, Leticia Romero. This team definitely has talent at all five positions. They've also got players from last year who never really had a chance to establish themselves. John Quill Jones, Rachel Bannum, I, I don't think, did she play at all last year? I know she got hurt pretty early. The main reason why Chinay's injury takes them out of the playoff race, in my opinion, is just that in this league, you kind of do need that star power, that one player that when the clock is ticking down, you know you can put the ball in their hands and they can put it on themselves to win it all for you. And Cheney is the only one who has proven the, the capability to do that. Well, her rookie year, she dominated against even some of the best, the most established players in the league. As of right now, when I look at the Sun roster, Cheney is the only person that I can look at and say, yeah, she's got potential, she could win MVP something. That being said, even though I don't put them in the playoffs, I still have them listing fairly high up because they seem to be trending upward. Since Kurt Miller joined, he's put, he's established a culture of winning, you know, and I think I've seen them play consistently better. If you look at the first half of the year versus the second half of the year, even with the, all the pieces that were missing, they were still worth, they were still a team in contention. They were, they were a team worth mentioning. This is a team that has definitely been getting better and better in recent years. They just need to go out and prove how much they're actually capable of. I don't have enough faith in them to believe right now that they will make it into the playoffs, but I would not be shocked if they find a way to sneak in at the 11th hour because they've got talent at all five positions. They've got depth at all five positions. I just need to know, can that translate to consistently playing well on the floor because they do have plenty of young players that are still developing you know can they consistently compete with and even beat some of the top teams in the league in order to force their way into title conversation as i said I, if chimay was here i could almost put them in top five in the league because she's she herself is a star with a great supporting cast but without her, is it just supporting cast versus star power every night? Or is someone else actually going to step up and establish themselves as a worthwhile star too? Making them twice as dangerous when Chine does come back. Or maybe they'll prove me wrong and prove that star power in this league means nothing if you have a good enough team that's built well and has a strong system in place. 
Shit, I've been wrong before about a lot of things. Don't take my word for anything. I think Connecticut has a very talented roster and they are building towards a very strong future. I just don't expect them to break out this year. I think this year is going to be another up and down season where the downs slightly outweigh the ups and they end up just barely missing out. So that's it for this episode. Tune in tomorrow where I reveal the first playoff team. And until then, this has been The Fan Perspective. I'm your host, Nathan Lyle. Have a great day.